Hello, my name is Jeffrey Battle. I am an original member of the Rocky Mount Boys Club. Hello, my name is Michael Lewis, and I am an original member of the Rocky Mount Boys Club. My name is Wayne Battle. I'm a proud original member of the Rocky Mount Boys Club. Yes, my name is uh, Anthony Coley. Um, I'm a uh, current employee of the Boys and Girls Club of Tar River Region. My name is Reginald Barrett. I'm an original member of the Rocky Mount Boys Club. Hello, I'm Ron Green, the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of the Tar River Region. And today is my honor and privilege to have some of the original members of the Boys Club of Rocky Mount. Um, I've been knowing several of these guys for the 10 years that I've been in the organization. But uh, today they, they're going to talk about a little bit about how, how it was when they were at the club. Uh, we're going to solve a whole mystery about where the club actually started. And just talk about the special relationship that these guys have with each other. And uh, I'm sure that we'll hear about the, the 78 champ uh, that came out of not only the boys club Rocky Mount, but Rocky Mount Senior High. Uh, so we're just going we're just going to have some barbershop talk and just talk about it. With this being Black History Month, we know that the Boys Club of Rocky Mount is Black History, and we just want to get their their side of the story. So, guys, I, I guess one of my my first question would be, let's go ahead and get this get this on the table. Where was the first Boys Club in Rocky Mount? On the corner. <laughs> First Boys Club was on the corner of Barnes and Springbrook Drive in Hillsdale. Yeah, yeah. And we, um, we all, well, the three of us, Mike, Jeffrey, and I, we were three of the original members during 1972 when uh, Mr. Robert Sharp opened up the doors to that Boys Club. He had a ping pong table, was the only piece of equipment at the time that he had. And uh, we were just excited to have somewhere to go yeah. when it rained mm -hmm. during that time. Uh, outside of Hillsdale Park, that became my outlet. Yeah, Jeff, so, you live right down the street from I actually did. Re Reggie actually lived closer. Uh, but I lived down the street, but at that time, Reggie had a little more freedom than I had. <laughs> so I lived right beside the pub. So if he was in the pub, my mom could see what I was doing. She called me home, put a rake in my head. I had a rake in my chop of God. <laughs> so, so up the street to the boys club was like an escape. Because, yeah. you know, they knew I was safe. Right, yeah. They knew I was in an environment. Mr. Right. Sharp, he didn't play. Yeah. And, uh, and there was a place where all my friends were. So they, it was an escape I could go to as a, at that age. What, 11? 11 or 12. 11. Yeah. 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 So. So either 72 or 71, but it was definitely the early 70s. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Mr. Sharp was, uh, he was a, a well-disciplined man and he instilled that upon the, uh, the young men who came into the organization. You, uh, you had to display respect for yourself and everyone else. And you had to display respect for the property itself because it just didn't show up. Somebody had to donate or, right. or labor to build the, the building and uh, looking back you know you just think how how uh, special it was to be able to have somewhere to go you mm -hmm. know it may to some people driving through it may just look like a little corner shack right you know <laughs> uh well well built corner shack but it was our shack yeah and it was, right. it, was yeah. And it meant the world to us and it's just a a good thing to be a part of. So, so when they say that the club was on Albemarle, <laughs> <Abel. laughs> <laughs> so so I guess that means that it might have been Albemarle, maybe for a minute or some kind of you know they what they chartered as the original site, but yeah. the actual club, right? Albemarle. Say the actual club was you say Albemarle Avenue. Avenue. Ab 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 the, 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 uh, the original club was in Hillsdale oh, on the corner of Barnes and right. Springbrook. Yeah. Um, Albemarle, it was a rec center. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sharp, he formed uh, uh, a 
basketball team for the uh, Boys and Girls mm-hmm. Club. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And on Albemarle was where the rec center was located. Gotcha. And uh, we were just one of the teams gotcha. uh, uh, throughout the community that participated at the gym on Albemarle. But the club itself was Hill Gym. Hill Gym. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Who's the deck of cards? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we we talk about this all the time in Boys and Girls Club. We we say um, the number one reason kids come to the club is because of the caring adults that are there. Now here y'all talk about Mr. Shaw. Yes. Y'all talk about him for a second. Mr. Shaw, he was um, a science teacher at Parker Junior High School at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, as Mike said, just a disciplinarian. Caring person, um, he was a father to the fatherless, and mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways, and um, just had a caring spirit. So uh, he he really stands out in, in my mind. You know, just yeah. you know, something, some of the benefits of folks. Something that you really learn to appreciate, man. Just the older that you get, the more things you see, and the more knowledge that you gain as you grow. You know, mm-hmm. you, you you tend to appreciate a gentleman like that. Yeah, right. You know, because you tend to want to emulate something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well mounted, well, brother. Mm-hmm. And uh and so looking back, he was the original Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. He, he right, literally right, had right. he literally yeah. had this this whip. That he, <laughs> boy, he could pop that thing. Now, and I think if, if nothing else, that kind of let the guys know, hey, y'all about to stay in line. Yeah. Yeah. Go some shot on this whip on you. <laughs> You know, it's uh, it takes some skill to uh, to really be able to master a whip, and he used to uh, put on demonstrations for us where he'll set up stuff and he'll whip that baby, and you know that was that was fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of like I used to do when I was uh, early on in my career working in the club. I would tell those kids, I say, "You don't want to go in my office and get that paddle." Do you? <laughs> <laughs> so one day, one of the staff members came and said. You ain't got no pal in your office. I said, yeah, but they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's right. Yeah, so Mr. Shaw was, was the guy. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah he man. was. I, I know. He provided a, a lot of first for me. Um, I had never rode a, a bus at that time, and he, he set up a trip for the boys' club to go to Wilmington to the battleship. And uh, I never fished before, and uh, he taught us how to fish. You know, the ones who was on that trip, um, Carol Wins, He provided a trip to Carol Wins that um, all the members of the uh, boys' club had an opportunity to participate in. So. <laughs> Those moments in time were a big deal to me. Yeah. You, you know y'all got me reliving bad memories in my childhood. Right? <laughs> Since I didn't go on that trip, right? You ain't get to go on that trip. I'm getting sad all over again, man. Like, Why y'all doing that to a brother? I said, Mama said you're going to go. Huh? Oh, no. It's all good, though. Yeah, you yeah. know, and, and those kind of trips and stuff right there, that, that, that help bridge the gap between, yeah. you know, uh, young men in the community, but it also gives us some experiences that you're going to have throughout that you have throughout your life. But I always say, you try to give your kids the things that you may have didn't get a chance to experience, but you also want them to relive some of the things that you had right. the opportunity right. to do. What was some of the, probably your fondest memories of being at the boys' club? Well, I want to start to say that uh, when we go on Albemarle. <laughs> and uh, directly this time with Mr. Reed, okay. he also got in contact with the officer, William. Yeah. They literally took the time out to schedule us a trip to go to Marstown, Tennessee for two days mm-hmm. and give this tournament, which was uh, about 33 teams. We finished third. Uh, it was just was a safe haven. It just was phenomenal. But something different here. You do need to know these three guys right here, y'all looking at three legends. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about these three guys right here, Jeff, Mike, and Reggie. 1978, put Rocky Mountain on the map. Mm-hmm. These guys right here is just awesome. Yeah. So you're a little younger than them. 
Yeah, well, me and Mike, we're in the same class. So okay, same class guy. behind these two guys. Oh, okay. Kurt Beatty was on the team too. They brought the gold home. Yes. I heard that, yeah. You know, and, and I was hearing y'all talk about the basketball story and about how who was dunking and all those type of things. So you the big dog. I could dunk. No, that ain't what I heard. I heard you bringing it down. No, I, I could dunk. I oh had, my I had a couple good dunks. You said you had a couple of good dunks. <laughs> you know what? They had just brought it back, what? A year before? Yeah. Oh, the dunk? Yeah. 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 The dunk. They had stopped it for a while. Yeah. Well, let's say a back was 360. They were doing something. And Monte Cow, they were, they weren't, they were coming for the slam. It was yeah. robbing. Yeah. 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 So you said the back was 360. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffrey lived in the square. <laughs> yeah, that's why every time I look at a rim, man, I'm like, damn, what is he doing for that high? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's been a right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people. But see, he wants to use build that too, then. That's how you know, right? <laughs> a lot of people are fortunate enough to be able to, yeah, they might be able to duck their hand and don't hit their hand on the rim. This man had to duck his head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, to, to keep his head from slamming into the rim. Uh, yeah, I heard it said one time that um, um, a fan had come to one of our games and Jeffrey was just going off. And uh, at the end of the game, the fan said, um, I thought Buck Williams was taller than that. <laughs> and he was talking about Jeff. <laughs> so, so y'all had definitely some, an impact player. So y'all yeah. had some, some legendary. But you know um, what? We, we did, but that starting five of his, most of the players came from that boys club. Yeah, well, yep. Say, yeah, yeah, came yep, from yeah. that boys club. All of them from the boys club. All of us was going to the boys club, and you know, we just happened to. Yeah. That first, that first interaction with you had a a, a group activity, for us, other than being in the park. Right. That yeah. someone was in charge, other than our teacher, mm -hmm. you know, outside. You know, we were talking about the silver tan, yep. bit of basketball, mm -hmm. but they all. That's right. Things of that nature, man. Just team, man. man. Hats off, uh, Coach Hen, seeing these three guys, two more too, talent at a very, very early age. Mm -hmm. And he just stuck with them from Aaron Wilson when they went to senior high. Coach Hen yeah. went to senior high. Yeah. These guys are forced to be reckoned with their junior and sophomore year. Mm -hmm. mm. So you, if you circle back, and you think about it from a chronological standpoint, um, you know, you, you, you do the math, you know, you, you, you would have to contribute to the boys club. Yeah, exactly. You know, yep. so you not only learn and have a place where you can uh, develop um, your physical self, but you also have a place where you develop your mental self, mm -hmm. which as we all know, as, as grown men, uh, at the end of the day, that's more crucial than anything. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know? so, Absolutely. So you, if for those who are able to watch this and, and realize that they were fortunate enough to become uh, young young men and uh, older men and raise a family, I think you you learn that the, the mental aspect is, is, is the most crucial thing. And so you you have a place where you can lean on and get that balance from because it started uh, here. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's uh, well, well, yeah. So it's, uh, as uh, Mustafa would say, the life is circle, the circle of life is the circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and see, that's, that's the thing we see in, uh, you know, in a lot of other clubs around the country. So I know when I was in Tennessee, we had some boys that we grew up in the club and they got to high school. They ended up winning the state championship. They were 32 and 0. Everybody on the team mm -hmm. came up to the boys and girls club. Yeah. And I know that that's kind of, y'all were like a family. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. you know, grew up in, you was in the, around the same neighborhoods. You grew up together, went to the boys club together. Mm -hmm. And as you go into high school, you stayed tight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were some of your, your, I guess, fondest, or, or let me see your, your best lessons that you learned at Discipline. It, it taught us, you know, you got a lot of hate, a lot of crime. Mm -hmm. So when I say discipline, I mean it, it helps you lower your ego instead of fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't always work, 
but you had a place where you could have a reference point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there were times you had to fight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, at least you had a, uh, what I call a, uh, a tree of decisions. You know, you go to this branch. Okay. You try to work logic off of this branch. It don't work. You move to this one. You move to this one. So you, you had a, a, a repertoire of being able to be able to work through a crisis, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to just going from zero to 10, mm -hmm. you know. So we hope that by the time you work through that like a tree, you know, you get up to five, you got a resolution. And so now you can bring it on back down. Yeah. You know, so that's what you, you hope that. Uh, right, 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 right and wrong, man. And, and, and for, I guess for a lot of us, it was really easy concept. Mm -hmm. You know, because we grew up where things was right or things was wrong. Mm -hmm. And we chose to pick the things that were right most of the time. None mm -hmm. of us. And if we saw somebody that was, you know, leaning to the left or right, well, as we call, we used to call them knuckleheads, yeah. we would uh, not kind of push ourselves away from them, not not saying you treat them any different than anybody else in the yeah. situation, but I tend not to hang yeah. with, with knuckleheads because I had to go home to a lady named. She let us go. She knew we were safe. Mm -hmm. I could tell her where I was going. I could go up to sleep. And knuckleheads didn't tend to hang around mm -hmm. the boys club when you have a strong leader there that don't go for nothing like I heard you all say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of, you know, you embrace everybody mm -hmm. and you try to help, right? Man, especially if a kid has a problem because you never know what's going on. Right. You know, um, but for the most part, when a kid feels there to say, talking earlier about the lineage and how I, you know, I talk about standing on the shoulders of like a Mr. Shaw or Frank Lombardo or Teresa Shaw and those who came before me. Um, and I always said we try to make it better. We try to have more creative ways of developing young people. Uh, we try to provide more opportunity for young people. We try to make the facilities look a lot better. And I, I heard y'all talk about earlier, y'all saying that the, the club over there uh, had a ping pong table. And what, what, what was it? Because it looked a whole lot different than what you see today, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. They had the cars. Total <laughs> <upgrade. Digging> cars. <laughs> y'all were talking about that just a little bit, kind of. Oh, they stepped up with y'all. They yeah. stepped up. <laughs> oh, yeah, album. Yeah. 
like Wayne said, he remembered the, 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 the gym, but well, the gym was cross town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, here you had this, this nice facility. You can, you know, you had the recreation room, and then you can walk right down the hall to the gym. Yeah, you know, which is amazing. So, yeah, yeah, and um, the the boys club that we we attended, it was just one big room. And it, like I said, had a pink, uh, ping pong table, and then we eventually graduated to a pool table, and um, different different card games and board games that kind of thing. And then we eventually graduated to putting a volleyball net outside. Yeah. So, so we were just Baby truly steps. not great. Yeah. Baby so, so we run. Not cutting off. So, Ron, by that being said, if it wasn't for the boys and girls club, it, there's no telling where I would be at today. Mm -hmm. It gave me a decision to be here and be safe. As you heard me say before, safe haven. Now, these kids, there's a whole other generation coming behind us. Mm -hmm. they, and they're a lot wider. Mm -hmm. And they kind of need to join the club, come in, get the same discipline that we have. You can see we all stayed out of trouble. Yeah. And just, and just piggybacking off, off of that, yeah, talk to them a little bit about where y'all are today in your life, in your career. You know, because we, we talked about, say, hey, I say we try to give every young person an opportunity to grow into what they can and should become. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is going to be. Because, you know, I don't know what they're going to be. I don't know if they're going to be the next uh, mm -hmm. principal or the next president or whatever it may be. I just want to give them that opportunity, take away those obstacles or help them over those obstacles mm -hmm. to, to give them a path to what they can grow up to be. Talk to them a little bit about what y'all do, uh, what you have done, uh, and whether it's you know, close to retiring, whatever it may be. Talk, talk about that little career path for y'all. <laughs> I'll keep it how you want to. Go ahead. Just, you know, I'm a diesel technician. I work for Cummins. I've been out there 20 years. And um, I just turned 62. So. By that being said, as far as retirement, they're telling me 67 that's some months, but I'm sorry to tell y'all, I've been saving all my life. And I can't keep going on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I do. I'm a diesel technician. Okay. One of the most valuable jobs out there, that people that most sought out jobs that people don't know about is the a diesel, diesel technician. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I work at uh, Duke University. Um, I'm a manager there over at Duke, Duke Hospital. Um, I'm a Tar Heel first for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, I'm approaching retirement as well. Um, just looking forward to the opportunity to uh, cut this traveling back and forth from Rocky Mount to Durham and, and uh, just enjoy the, the rest of my life yeah. but uh, education has always been first in in my life my buddies lives uh, we all got scholarships to play uh, sports from high school which uh, allowed us to go to college and um, of course um, going to the NFL or NBA isn't always in the eyesight of everyone, but when you got a good education, you can still maintain a good quality of life. And through the education that we receive, we've been able to not complain about the way life has been to us. Yeah. Mike? Um, gosh, where do I start? I don't want to. Um, I'm semi-retired. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I, the reason I put it that way is because uh, I have several projects that I uh, that I'm involved in. Uh, my most recent one that I am proud of is that uh, from all my trips coming back home, I started looking around what can I do here. So, so now what I'm trying to do in my hometown uh, is uh, get involved with affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So, so. Uh, me and some of my partners, we we uh, hope to have uh, to be able to contribute and uh, 
build a few houses for affordable uh, family, make it affordable for families and stuff. So that's one project. Um, there's there's two other projects that haven't come to fruition yet, but they're in Africa, you know. Yeah. So so right. working on that. Um, but to say, well, how did a country boy start, you know, getting into all this stuff? Well, I went to the University of Maryland, so I was fortunate enough to, to get an athletic scholarship. But one thing that I realized, and I was not really ever a bad student, just not a great one, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, but I, I did take the geometry, the algebra, and all that in high school and all that stuff. So I, I like to preface that by saying I, I might have been stupid sometimes, but I was never dumb. Mm -hmm. So, so, but when I ended up going to the University of Maryland, um, I always, I always joke and say, yeah, I went on an athletic scholarship, but I tripped up on an education, mm -hmm. you know, so, and what I mean by that is, is that I, you know, by Maryland is, a lot of people don't realize it's only six miles from the nation's capital. So I did my internships in DC. Um, I got to hobnob with some of the the more you know influential people, so you start to see the world in a different light. Mm -hmm. um, so, when the, to speak to what Reggie was saying is not everybody was going to make the NFL or the NBA or whatever. Now, a person like myself never got hurt in my entire life, right? I I go to uh, Kansas City. Uh, I'm rocking and I'm rolling. I shatter my wrist. You know, so that's just the way it goes. Never been hurt in my entire life. So you go from what some people would think, oh, you're going to sit on the mountain to down into the valley. But the good thing about it is that people say, well, were you concerned? I said, no, because I always knew I could do something different. You know, so what I started doing was doing that differently. You know? So fast forward, uh, I left corporate, I left the corporate world uh, about six years ago. Uh, and I just been doing my own thing with different projects and stuff. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to travel a lot of the world and see the world and see how people uh, conduct themselves and, and get to see how other countries uh, conduct themselves and, and I always get tickled because I remember one day I was riding down the coast of, of Greece and I kid you not, I had to just bust out laughing because I'm looking at this this blue ocean, and I'm just laughing because I was like, "How in the age did a country boy from Rocky Mountain <laughs> drive down the coast?" And and but I was over there on business, and I just enjoyed, you know, that thought, you know. Yeah. And so it just made me realize that again, places like this, yeah. which afforded me a foundation and. And a foundation started um, in places like this that if you are young, you can really do anything. Mm -hmm. The sky is the limit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to have a foundation. Like I always told my kids and my nephews and stuff, I said, a smart man can be stupid, but a stupid man cannot be smart. Mm -hmm. So if you need to be the smartest kid in the room and play like you done, then play like you know, but don't be dumb. Yeah. You know, so that is one of my favorite sayings is that because you can build off of anything if you got the proper foundation. Yeah. Um, so I kind of got all over the place, but um, yeah, that's all right. You know, so yeah. that's part of you know yeah. my my nutshell. So. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> 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 Just kind of, just kind of talk about uh, what, what you've been doing. Um, yeah, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> I'm retired, man. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, and watch cowboy picture. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do before they retire? Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, and besides playing golf, play basketball. I got a scholarship, University of Memphis. So I signed with NC State, but I went to University of Memphis. Uh, uh, my greatest honor is joining the uh, United States Marine Corps. I'm very proud to have been a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I went. Uh, man, I crossed. Up, I can cross stuff off the bu my bucket list. Mm -hmm. um, 
two major jobs I had was a correction officer of a seal in law enforcement, uh, a job that I liked. And from there, I worked with Metro. I drove a train uh, mm. for the city right. of Washington, D.C. All right. Subway trains for a while. Uh, and from there, from there on, I started a nonprofit uh, here in Rocky Mountain, uh, Evolve Golf and Education, uh, just to help kids that wouldn't ordinarily be introduced to the game. To introduce them to the game. Yeah. You know, these guys have been helping me tremendously uh, with that effort. We started last year. Um, and it's, it's it's going quite well. Yeah. But that's what I do. Yeah. Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I play golf. I play golf. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I could basically, right now, just trying to get in better shape, man. Just trying to live happy. My boy's been on me. And we, we, we got together, man, and just trying to live a little happier. And do the right things, and I want to show my kids this summer when we get back together that the officer that Mr. Jeff that was riding in the car last year, uh, yelling at them, is going to be walking with them, yelling at them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So looking forward to that. But pretty much, man, that's it. Nothing. Uh, we wouldn't be what we are today, and currently we serve we serve about twelve hundred kids uh, through the organization. We started in Rocky Mount. And now the organization spans all the way down to Tarboro, down to Spring Hope, uh, Bailey Middlesex. So we're all over the area now. Um, at our peak in the schools before COVID, we were at 13 sites. Uh, going from one, trying to figure out the Hilldale, the Albemarle, to yeah, 13 yeah. all over. And um, But I think we are building on that legacy. We are continuing to transform young people just like yourself and to grow to be positive and productive in our communities and you know if it wasn't for y'all to pave the way you know we wouldn't be where we are today uh, you know I, like I, I go around and I have my chest stuck out when we're at national conferences or we're in meetings and they say where you you know where are you from or where you live or what organization you with I'm proud to say that I work for the organization in Rocky Mountain North Carolina and we're going to continue to build on that like the team make you guys proud uh, we're going to continue to try to build our alumni database. We got, uh, if you think about it, almost 60 years that we've been in existence. Just think about how many members have come through those doors and the impact they've had on not only Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, not only the Twin Counties, not only North Carolina, but as you heard, all over the world. And uh, we want to continue to, to build on that. I thank you guys for coming, man, and showing up. And, thank you. And uh, reliving some of those days. I know y'all feeling happy now. You know, you're going to think you can go in there and jump and touch the ring. <laughs> <laughs> be like me, I say, they, they say, Mr. Green, I, I heard you used to be fast. I say, the key word was used to be. <laughs> Not anymore. So if you want to challenge me to anything, you challenge me in ping pong and connect four. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So thank you guys, man, and I uh, appreciate you. Oh, yeah, we want to give it up. Black History Month also. There you go. All right. Yeah, because Boys and Girls Club, uh, Tar River Region started off as Boys Club. Boys Club is Black History. Good afternoon. I'm Michael Jones. I am just want to kind of give you a little brief history about uh, how instrumental the Boys Club was in my life. Uh, I recall when I was a young man, that was the place to be, place to go. It gave us an avenue to go out, have fun. Uh, we played different games. Uh, we took trips. Uh, I remember Mr. Reed and how we uh, were to, uh, during the summertime, we would go and he would allow us to go down to Tennessee. I remember going to Tennessee, my very first time really being out of town. And it was uh, at the Grace at the Boys Club and they, they rented, he chartered a bus and took us down to Tennessee to the Lost Sea. i never forget this. And uh, as a young kid, that was very exciting for me, very excited for uh, the, uh, the brothers in my neighborhood. Um, it's just a good place to be. Um, I, I got so many fun memories of the Boys Club at the time. It was the Boys Club. Uh, like I was telling the, uh, the instructor here, uh, the Boys Club has been so instrumental in my life. Even uh, when I was uh, became an adult, um, uh, my two sons uh, came through the Boys Club. They uh, was there. There was a resource for my wife and I to uh, have someone to, that we could trust. 
um, with our kids while we was working. You know, they would uh, keep our kids and um, never have any problems. They really enjoy the environment. At this particular facility, uh, I remind, I'm remembered uh, back in, um, uh, Earlier in uh, my life with the Boys Club, I remember that uh, we used to, they used to have uh, like uh, lunches. They would give lunches to uh, the community, whoever wanted uh, to come and uh, get a free lunch, they, they would feed in the community. Oh man, it was, it was just so many great things uh, the Boys Club was doing, and yet doing today. And so, yes, uh, fun memories of the Boys Club. And I, uh, today, uh, through the, uh, the resources with the Boys Club, I'm today, I'm a pastor of one of the churches here in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and um, I just thank God for the upbringing that I had and the Boys Club being a part of my life. It's just, it's, it's just great. And um, it's just so much I can say uh, about the Boys Club, but one of the main things I wanted to say, it taught us to become men. Um, we had avenues that it kept us out of trouble. Uh, you know, and that's one thing that's really plaguing our young people. Uh, it seems like they don't have a lot to do now, but it's one thing about the Boys Club, uh, which we call the Boys and Girls Club now. You know, it's an avenue to come to have great fun, to learn, um, to, to interact with other people. And um, it's just a great facility that uh, when I was working, uh, I did donate my, my funds well. Uh, to the Boys Club uh, with the, um, um, we, uh, it was a, a fundraiser that we had at my job and um, United Way, thank you, United Way. And, uh, and I will have my funds to come to the Boys Club because I remember how instrumental they was to help my wife and I when my kids uh, was young. But now I got two sons, they're grown. Uh, I do have a daughter. I, can, I don't recall her coming to the Boys Club, but yet she knew about the Boys and Girls Club. And so thank you, Boys Club. Thank you for what you have put into my life. Um, I, I pray and trust that other kids will come and take advantage of what we have here in the community. The Boys Club was, was in my neighborhood. It was, the, uh, I guess it was the original Rocky Mouse Boys Club ran by Mr. Sharp. And it was in my neighborhood and it was up the street from my house. It was a place where I could escape where my parents couldn't see me. So I could get away and spend time with my friends. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Uh, and I loved it because it introduced me to a lot of, uh, I guess the first organized situation where you be around your friends from the neighborhood. And uh, it was good stuff. Met a lot of people that I still know today. So. Uh, I am a proud alumni of the Boys and Girls Club. So one of the things that I like to share is that the, the true meaning of the Boys Club is a place of refuge. It's a place where you can feel like an individual. And um, so these are the things that it was instilled upon me that uh, the days that it rained, instead of being somewhere getting in trouble, you can go to a place where you can let go and have fun with your friends. Um, those are just some of the meanings that I got out of the Boys Club. You know, I am a proud alumni of the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, this was phenomenal for me as growing up. It was really a safe haven for us to go to. Through the grace of God, it just kept us out of trouble. And the director at the time, he just did a phenomenal job, phenomenal job. And we just learned how to instill it within each other and learn basketball skills from one another. And it took us to another level. And basically the whole thing just kept us out of trouble. So that's where we're at today with this. I'm a proud alumni of the Boys and Girls Club. Actually, 50 years ago, a friend of mine, Mike Lewis and I was having a conversation last night about uh, the, boys and the Boys Club at that time. And, um, it, it developed me in a variety of ways. Two of my best friends that I met there are my best friends today. They're here with me today. Um, it taught me values of, of loyalty, commitment, discipline. Uh, Robert Sharp, who was the director at that time, 
um, he ruled the boys club with an iron rod and, and that level of respect that we learned from him it just lives inside of me to this day. I am a proud alumni of the Boys and Girls Club. What the Boys and Girls Club mean to me is uh, more of a place where I was able to uh, come and reach out to a lot of youth, uh, help develop them in certain ways from the uh, way I was coming up. Um, I came back here in Boys and Girls Club back in uh, the late uh, 90s and uh, I've been employed with Boys and Girls Club uh, since then. Um, one of the things uh, to me, I was able to see uh, uh, a lot of generations, a lot of my younger kids come up, uh, become productive, responsible and caring citizens. Uh, also, uh, I was able to see uh, some of my kids come up uh, through basketball, baseball, football, and a lot of other sports that's throughout the board, throughout here, throughout the club. Uh, and I'm definitely a proud member of the Boys and Girls Club.